Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Bramberger, and it's my pleasure to share with you some work that I've been doing here at the University of Washington with Nathan Coots and Steve Brunton. We've titled this talk, uh, Data-Driven Stabilization of Periodic Orbits. And you can find an accompanying paper on archive at this link right here, as well as a full code repository to go with everything in the paper at my GitHub at this link right here. Now, what it is that I want to talk to you about today is chaos. Chaos is one of the most fascinating and perplexing aspects of modern dynamical systems theory. And in my opinion, chaos is one of the most aptly named phenomena in all of mathematics. And the reason for this is that when we see a chaotic system, the word that should come to mind is exactly chaos. It is unpredictable and complex and highly nonlinear. But decades of mathematical theory has shown us that chaos is not necessarily as complicated as we once thought it was. In fact, chaotic attractors typically have a skeleton inside of them. And this skeleton is composed of infinitely many periodic orbits that densely fill this attractor. And so one way that you can think of a chaotic transient is following one of these periodic orbits and then randomly jumping to another periodic orbit and jumping and jumping ad infinitum. Now, the issue is that all of these periodic orbits are completely unstable. So you will never be able to follow any of them for an infinite amount of time. But you could imagine that this is exactly what has perplexed researchers for a very long time because there is all kinds of structure inside of these chaotic systems that we would love to be able to exploit. And this is exactly the idea that came from the uh, 1990 seminal paper by Odd Grabogi and York, simply titled Controlling Chaos. And the authors came up with the idea that they can exploit these periodic orbits that embed the structure of this attractor in order to tame the output of a chaotic system. That is, it would no longer be completely unpredictable and chaotic. It would be periodic and therefore predictable. And the method by which they decided to approach this is using some work due to uh, Poincaré from the late 19th century, where Poincaré said that when you have a chaotic system, instead of following the full trajectory as it winds through phase space, you can define a lower dimensional transverse to the flow sub, uh, subspace, now referred to as a Poincaré section. And you can simply track the intersection of those trajectories with this subspace. And the generally nonlinear mapping that will iterate you from successive intersections with this subspace is now referred to as a Poincaré map. So what Odd Grabogi and York propose is that if you have a nonlinear uh, parameter-dependent Poincaré mapping, you can introduce small, precise parameter tweaks every single time that trajectory crosses that section in such a way that you can guide the orbits and the trajectories of that chaotic system and force them to follow one of these periodic orbits. And the result of this is a perfectly stabilized periodic orbit, a predictable output to the system. Now, the issue with this is that in all but the simplest systems, a, a explicit Poincaré mapping is almost never available to us. And this has led myself and my collaborators to take a data-driven approach to this in order to discover these Poincaré mappings to broadly apply these methods that Odd Krabogi and York have given us. And since this is a data-driven method, this is going to start by gathering data. We are going to gather section data over a range of parameter values. You are going to have a focal parameter value, say mu bar here, and you can look in a neighborhood in it, of it and slowly collect data for all of the sections. And then once you've collected all of this data, you can apply modern and novel data-driven discovery techniques to find an accurate representation of your unknown Poincaré mapping. In particular, the way that we're going to approach this is to use the CINDY method, sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics. And what the CINDY method does is it frames model discovery as a sparse regression problem. That is, you assume you have a library of candidate functions that can possibly make up the right-hand side 
of your nonlinear Poincaré mapping. And you assume that your mapping lies in the span of all of these candidate functions. Then using the data that you just co collected, you can turn this into a massively overdetermined linear algebra problem for which the unknowns are now the coefficients in your linear span. You can solve this using sparsity promoting techniques to arrive at a parsimonious and faithful description of your Poincaré mapping dynamics. And the advent that this has for us is that with the explicit mapping, you can start investigating the skeleton, the structure of that chaotic attractor. And you can pull out the periodic orbits in a very systematic way, because those periodic orbits correspond to just recurrent or periodic points in this mapping. So once you have a specific point that you would like to investigate, we can use the pole placement method that has long been known in control theory in order to stabilize these orbits. And the way that this works is you're going to introduce small parameter tweaks that are state dependent, given by a control matrix K, in such a way that the linearization around one of these periodic orbits or periodic points will have its eigenvalues entirely contained inside of the unit circle. And in this way, stabilizing the periodic orbit. Now, our contribution to this method is that we show that you can automatize this problem by forming a system of linear matrix inequalities that can be used to find the precise parameter manipulation matrices K. And the result of all of this work is that you have identified periodic orbits that you can stabilize and the precise parameter manipulations that lead to these perfectly stabilized periodic orbits. Now, to demonstrate the utility of this, I'm presenting to you projections of the three-dimensional Rosler system in just the xy coordinate plane. And what you can see here are six stabilized periodic orbits. We have a period one orbit, a period two orbit, three, four, five, and six. All stabilized in a quick and efficient manner using the methods that we propose in our work. Now, let me conclude by uh, just emphasizing some important areas where we can apply these methods going forward. The first of which is to spatially extended systems. Now, spatiotemporal chaos that's observed in spatio spatially extended systems is similarly guided by unstable periodic orbits. And therefore, these methods hold great promise for us to understand the nature of attractors in spatially ascended, extended systems and potentially control the output. Particularly, this is useful for places like turbulent fluid flows. Another place where we would like to be able to use these methods efficiently is in optimal space mission design. That is, in many body simulations of our solar system, a number of studies have shown that unstable trajectories and unstable orbits can be used to design space missions that travel vast dif uh, distances across the universe or the solar system with very little energy applied. And what we propose is to use these methods to first find those unstable orbits, and second, find the optimal control so that we can follow those orbits. Thank you.